How's it going? Fox back again with another tutorial, Native Instruments FM8 today. I've been doing uh, deep house basses with pretty much all the synths that I've got. Uh, today it's the turn of FM8. I so say it's quite straightforward again. Three, uh, two sine waves, a sawtooth, three sine waves, a sawtooth and a square. All basic waveforms again. Nothing too crazy with the ratios, I'll keep them all pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got a delay on it, same as all my other ones. It helps accentuate the lower end and carry on, carry on through to the other notes. So yeah, if you are not subscribed to my channel, at Sound Design Tutorials, the links up here. Please uh, subscribe. But yeah, for now, I'll show you the sound. So there you have it. It's got quite a lot of space for a for a bass patch. That comes from the uh, chorus delay. We use quite a lot of effects on this to get out. I wanted to use a shelving EQ, peak EQ, psych delay. Sorry, not chorus delay. Cabinet and a bit of tube just to gritty it up a bit. But yeah, for now we'll start with the operators as always. I'll go ahead and create a new sound. So operator F we will start on. I routed this through the filter, so I click the filter on, route the filter out through the through the main full, and I routed F through the filter at 86, 86, 87, and for F I changed it, kept it on a sine wave. Sorry, I kept the ratio at 0.25. So two octaves down from standard. Kept the offset as it was. I'll just check this button for the uh, key sync. Keep it nice and smooth. Next one was E. Click it, turn it on. For E, I used a square wave. Just a st standard square. The ratio for this was 0.25 again. Two octaves down. I'll just off this, offset this slightly to 2.490 just to detune it a bit. And I'll offset the phase to 0 0.08, just a tiny little bit of offset. Key sync it again, keep it nice and smooth. And I routed E through the filter as well at full volume. So yeah, just these two oscillators. Nothing special at the minute, no envelopes or anything set up yet. So we'll go ahead and do D. So turn D on. I routed this one through the output only a tiny amount at 27. And for D, I chose a sawtooth. I key synced it again. I key synced all the oscill oscillators that I used to keep it nice and smooth. This one I did down two octaves as well, 0.25. And I offset this one back to minus 2.0. So just a little bit of offset again. It just helps thicken the sound up. C turn it on. I routed this through the filter at 60. For C I kept it on a sine wave and I only pitched this one down to 0 0.5 so just one octave down compared to two on the rest. Key sync it again. There's four oscillators now. So yeah for oscillator B this is the last oscillator I used. I clicked it I didn't route this from the f through the filter, I wanted this one to uh, cut through on its own. I routed it straight to the output at 44, 45. I kept this on a side one, sine wave as well. And I kept this on 1, which is uh, the standard what it starts on. Uh, key sync this as well to keep it nice and even. I did a couple of uh, FM routing oscillators back into each other. I routed D, E back into D at 11. And I routed C back into B at 9. So yeah, that's it for the oscillators. As I say, real straightforward. We'll sort the envelopes up out in a minute. We'll go ahead and set the filter up, actually. This is what can sculpts the, the main part of the sound. So we'll go to the filter. I pulled the cut off right back down to about 7. 
I kept the mode all the way on to the left so it's on a low pass. Kept the resonance on 50. Filter 2, I pushed the spread all the way around to 100. Resonance on 50. Kept this on a low pass as well. I kept the mix between 1 and 2 dead center at 50. Kept it in uh, serial mode. And I dialed in the envelope. So I'll play it without the envelope and then I'll dial it in so you can see the effect it's having. I'll set the envelope up first actually so you can get the full the full gist of it. We'll just pull the sustain level down to about 0 0.41 and give it a bit of release, just push it out to about 0 .4, 0 0.04 something like that. And we'll just back the attack off ever so slightly, about 0 0.018. So yeah, I'll dial this envelope in now as you as I play the sound. Using an envelope on a cutoff is a real, real good way of giving it sort of a little bit of pluck to a bass sound. So yeah, that's it for the filter. We'll go and set up the envelopes for the other three, uh, the other five oscillators now. So for D, E, and F, I linked all the filters together. So I'll set D up first, and then I'll uh, link it together with the others. So yeah, quite snappy for this. Push the attack out ever so slightly. So about 0.25. Pull the release back to about 0.024. If I can zoom in so I can get hold of the decay. That's it. Pull the decay down to about 0.4, something like that. So it's quite a snappy, quick envelope. The sound's going to come in quick and then fade off quite quick. So yeah, as I said, this is the same as E and F. So if you click this link button here on the next two, that links M3 together. The envelope for Z we've already set up. S um, the envelope for B, I kept it as it was. This is the sound that's running straight through the out on its own. I didn't touch that, I just kept it as it was. I think I gave it just a tiny little bit of release. And the envelope for C, C this is quite a lot like the other two. I just made it a little bit less plucky. Just give it a, a bit of a steeper, a bit of a, a less steep slope. So like that, yeah, same amount of release, just a tiny little bit. So yeah, that's it for the envelopes. We'll go to the master section now. Boost the volume a little bit. I uh, boosted the uh, analog quite a lot. About three quarters of the way and digi digital to about half. The voices, I kept the polyphony on 16, clicked it to mono because it's a bass patch, kept it on dynamic, dynamic. pushed the voices to 2. Now d tune his voices ever so slightly, about a third of the way. And that's it for everything else. I didn't do portamento or anything like that. I, that's it for the master section. <laughs> Just the effects to deal with now then, so we'll go to the effects section. First one I did was a tube amp. Click on this box, turn it on. I pulled the volume down to 39. 39.40. And I pulled the drive back to about 13. Just to help warm it up a bit. The next one is a cabinet. Turned it on, kept it as standard, the twin green on an axis, 2 by 12 The size I pushed out to 25. Pulled the air down to 14. Boost the bass up to 20. 19, 20 will be fine. And the treble about 19 as well. Lovely these 
these uh, cabinets there. They're, they're like, they're like I, I would have called them amps if it was me. Like they would be called amps on any other plug-in. But yeah, they work really well, especially these twin ones, the tweed, tre tweed green ones. That this bass knob is uh, lovely for bass patches. So yeah, next to Shelvin EQ, flicked it, turned it on. I boosted the lows and the highs by a fraction. So it's a real smooth sort of subtle curve. I kept the volume on 50. Peak EQ. I wanted to bring out some of the tones. I boosted this section with a Q1 of about 61. Q2 I kept on 50 and the volume I boosted to about 56, 57. For the second one I boosted it about there. I just wanted to bring the mids out just to make it sound a bit thicker. one I used is just the uh, psych delay so we'll click that on the time I pulled back to 15-16 this is like the rate of the delay feedback I pulled back to 29 stereo I pulled back to 29 as well detune pushed it around to about 12 get the pitch where it is and the dry wet back to about 28 and that's it for the sound so it looks quite complicated with these effects, but they really do help in uh, boosting the sound out. I'll play it, I'll turn the effects off one by one, and then I'll bring them back in. EQ it makes a real difference to the sound. It just helps boost the points that you want the uh, the delay to catch hold of, really. Shelvin EQ. Cabinet. Tube. That tube really gives it a nice analog sound. helps keep everything in shape as well that tube amp it's strange it sort of uh, started to distort without it on when it's turned on it uh, makes everything sound nice and smooth so yeah that's it i'll just play a little beat quick <laughs> External process in there. I've just done that on the fly. That's probably what I would have done if I was using this bass in a for an actual track. Bit of overdrive works really well. You can home. This is like an EQ for the overdrive, so you can sort of aim it where you want at the sort of lows to low mids. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Nice deep house bass. Nothing too serious. Nice and straightforward. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Sound Design Tutorials, if you're not already. The links at the top here. Uh, Facebook and Google Plus page is Sound Design Tutorials. Okay, cheers. Thanks a lot. <laughs>